Thank you for joining us on Give It to Name with Jenny Lynn, the show that you can choose to name by going to my website, giveittonametv.com, and letting me know what you think this segment should be called. Today, I am wowed. I have been blessed to have great guests on my previous shows, but I'm especially wow today because as you can see, I have some military women with me. It has always been my desire to speak with women from the military, and you'll find out why as we, as we carry on with today's show. I'm going to start by introducing my guests, and today on my left is Teresa and uh, Rosemary and Sonia. I'm going to ask you ladies to introduce yourselves because I don't want to mislabel you by giving you the wrong rank. So Teresa, how about if you tell us a little bit about yourself and the division that you're associated with and your rank. Okay, um, hi, thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Chief Master Sergeant Teresa Blanchard and um, I'm in the Air National Guard, the Air Force. Um, it's a reserve unit of the Air Force. Uh, right now I'm out at uh, the 129th Rescue Wing. Okay. And um, our, our mission there is uh, rescue, obviously. And I've been in the military for 27 years now. Wow. So I've been doing it for a very long time. I came from Kansas, so I was in the unit there for a little while. I uh, was at a, a KC-135 unit there and then spent a lot of years there, then transferred out here four years ago. So I've been here for a while and I love California and it's beautiful and um, so much to do. So um, that's pretty much about me. Great, goodness, you've been in there for a long time. Yes. Okay, Rosemary. First, welcome to California. Thank you. <laughs> we love it here. Um, I'm Rosemary HM3 Galvin and um, I've been in the service for eight years now um, I'm in the Navy Reserves, and I've been in full-time for reserve. I mean, the whole-time reservist. Um, I just re-enlisted for another three years, and uh, I have two boys: a husband, a mother, a brother. Um, my life is pretty much civilian until you know, until the reserves. Uh, we're here to be called when we're needed, and until then, we just kind of do our job. Awesome. And you, Sonia? Hello. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm First Lieutenant Sonia Burton. I'm with the Army Reserves. Right now I serve as a medical service officer. And previously I was enlisted and then I commissioned over to officer. So I've had many of years. I've been 17, almost 18 years. So I've had many wow. of years on the enlisted side and now as a commissioned officer. And I've been all around active duty, Germany, Texas, you know, California, Kansas. Wow, Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I do love it here and I, I love serving my country. So I will be in, you know, 30 years plus or until they, they tell me to go home. So I love it. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> wow. That's all I can say, wow. I'm so impressed with you ladies. I mean, there are many things we experience in life that impresses us, but for me, this is very impressive. I grew up in British Guyana in South America, and we were obligated in high school, every single high school student when I was growing up, to give what they call national service. It was compulsory, and it was like a military for kids. And we were sent off for two weeks, three weeks, to this camp, military camp, where we were put in green uniforms and pretty much went through boot camp, <laughs> even though we were good. Wow. <laughs> and I did it all, even shot a gun. And I remember the first time I shot a gun, I thought I had dislocated my shoulder oh. because it was bigger than I. And so that's part of why I find what you guys are doing so fascinating because I knew that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I just didn't feel like that's what I was cut out for. So I'm gonna start with you, Teresa. Why did you join? Um, well, it started off with, um, my father was in the military, okay. and so um, it was a lot of our life, what we've been used to, and so I was familiar with the military. And um, as I was going through high school, graduated, uh, I still lived at home, and I wasn't really doing anything, and so Dad finally said, uh, you need to do something. And so I thought, well, let me go check it out. So I went out to, the, uh, to go see a recruiter, ask some questions, and find out what some of the things that I could 
could do. And so I thought, well, why not? So I went ahead and signed up and just joined in, and that's where it started, and I've loved it ever since. It's, um, it's been the best thing that I've ever done, and I could never wow. see myself, you know, have done anything else. It's just it's given me so much uh, travel, uh, meeting so many different people. It's just been really exciting, and just the, uh, the confidence it's given me as I've been going through, you know, growing up and, and spending so much time in the military, it's been fantastic. Incredible. I mean, we just, I mean, as a civilian, you just think it's this painful, horrible journey, you know, and I'm so glad we're doing this. So if anyone else out there feels the way I do, they're going to be corrected today. And so same question, Rosemary, why did you join? Uh, I was actually going to college. I was going to community college when a recruiter was there at a job fair and he started talking to me a little bit. It was, this was in the beginning of 2001 and I talked to him for a while he got my information and I kind of dodged him you know <laughs> now and then he would call and I would tell my mom oh I'm not here I'm not here <laughs> and uh, after September 11th happened I got I was scared at first and then I got angry and I wanted to be a part of making a difference and so at that point we proceeded with um, enlisting. Dear. Sonia, oh, wow. same question. My story's a little longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I um, actually um, started my, my journey in the Army in high school. I didn't, in, I didn't plan on joining the military, but the, I took a job course, and we were forced to take the, the ASFAB, the, the test, mm -hmm. the basic test for the military, and I scored really high, so the recruiters approached me. And I thought about it for a while. I knew I wanted to go to college. I knew I wanted a profession and a, and a skill. And, you know, they hyped me up a lot. And they're like, you know, you can actually have a profession, a skill, and go to college, you know, and we'll pay for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and my grades were, were very good. But, you know, as far as money wise, you know, I did need the college money. And I could be a part of something huge, you know, the Army, you know. The recruiters took me and, they, and, and I saw the MAP station where we go and, you know, I saw the, all the uniforms and it was like, wow. You know, we were Air Force where I, where I came from, so I didn't see a lot of Army and seeing them, it's like, wow, you know, this is huge and, and I can have a job, I can be trained and I can go to college. So I joined from there and, and ever since, you know, I know that it was the right choice, you know. It, it's been almost 18 years and I would do it all over again. I'm glad that I took that class and they forced me to take the test because I don't know where I'd be today without it. So I swear I am <laughs> so impressed with all of your stories. I wish I could speak to so many more females. I'm sure I'm going to get similar responses. So Teresa, do you want to tell us about what your first day was like, your first day that you enlisted? Um, the first day was great. I mean, it was swearing in, had my family there, um, so it was fantastic. It was the uh, first day of basic training that was much different, so <laughs> it was, <laughs> I think I can all remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, the so, first three days were terrible. Right, it, it's just horrible, and all three of us, we went to different training, um, obviously, so okay. with mine was basic training was in San Antonio, Texas, and um, got there the first day, and so you're just completely out of your element. You you don't know anybody. There's, uh, you know, people all around. There's uh, this individual that's just yelling at you, screaming at you, and mm -hmm. constantly, you mm -hmm. know, you can't do anything right. And so you're totally out of your element, and it's a very scary thing. And then you start thinking, oh my gosh, is this really, you know, was mm -hmm. I, did I make the right choice? Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Um, but then, you know, after the second, third day, the fourth day, then it starts, you start realizing there's a reason for what's going on. Um, it's about teamwork. It's about all of us working together and, um, you know, being properly trained airmen. So it was, you know, after a little while, you realize there is a reason for it. And you start doing things right, and you start working. You, you're running, you're marching, you're just doing all kinds of um, fantastic things that Amazing. just make you a better airman. So after that first day, it was, it was okay. But um, yeah, that first day, I'll always remember it bawled my eyes out. <laughs> I can imagine. I imagine. I mean, I'm just listening but to you. After that, it was good. It was good. It was good to get through that, and that was the start of my career. Awesome. Well, I know that anything you start sometimes the beginning is a little bit uncomfortable, but I would imagine the military is a whole different kettle of fish. 
right? Well, I was very excited. I mean, I was yeah. so excited. I'm, I'm the type of person that, you know, I do meet people and, and speak to people and, and, you know, I'm comfortable with people. So I don't remember a lot of yelling, you know, when I first started. And, and it, it, it seemed to be relaxing. I mean, or we came together. Yeah, we're the there wrong was so branch. much coming. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, but, you know, but you you were ten years before me. You know, I was doing a stress free type mm. of environment. You know, and there was so much camaraderie because all of the females we came from different places, so we we joined together. And, and I guess it, it just maybe our our personalities that that we made it through because the first day, you know, yeah, we ran around a lot and, and maybe they screamed, but it was still so exciting, like, wow, we did this, we're wait you know, and, and there were a lot of young, you know, um, recruits there, eighteen and mm -hmm. we had some older, but it, it was exciting. It was like, wow, a new life, you know, mm -hmm. we were active duty, you know, so we were going, we didn't know where, but it was it was exciting and we, we did see people that, you know, some females that bawled and, and they cried and they missed home, but there were so many others that it was like, wow, you know, we're in the army, and you know, we finally got our uniforms, and we look like everybody else. And oh, that was <laughs> you know, a we great felt thing. Apart we finally got your uniform. uniform. Yes. Mm -hmm. So well, it's so amazing to hear your stories. I can feel myself there, just listening to you tell them. Do you have any experience? Is boot camp a, a part of training for everyone? What is boot camp? Uh, well, boot camp is the beginning of. I guess them making you into what you're supposed to be the rest of your career. Uh, it's, I think they kind of break you down and kind of build you back up. Mm. Because the whole purpose is um, is about teamwork. It's about taking care of one another. Um, you yeah. know, and, and getting you into the mindset of not thinking about yourself all the time, um, of being there for one another, um, because y you are being, you know, prepared and ready and, and um, for a wartime situation. Mm -hmm. So it's about taking care of one another and, and watching your back and... Um, Attention to detail. Mm -hmm. They Those make you do things. really tedious little things that you're like, why am I doing mm -hmm. this? This is so pointless, but it's, it's the attention to detail that they really want you to get because the attention to detail could make or break somebody's life, could, mm -hmm. you know, crash a ship, could, you know, cost people, you know, people's lives. It's the Jeez. discipline. It's the discipline. Mm -hmm. You really, you know, recruits come from everywhere and, and they're not raised sometimes with a lot of discipline. So it, she said mm -hmm. they r break you down and raise mm -hmm. you back up. It's, it's really that they're, they're, they want to instill that discipline in you so that you will, when, when that commanding officer tells you you know, gives you a direct order or, or your master chief or, or in the different, you know, parts right. of branches, mm -hmm. you know, you do as you're told. And, and it's all about discipline. And, and they build you. I mean, I remember being built, you know, well, more, more than anything. I'm Definitely. Still, you guys I'm have still so much built. to tell. Yeah. We need a whole day because I have all <laughs> these questions on my list. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to ask you if either one of you were ever in a, in a combat situation where you had to deal with casualties and what was that like for you? Anyone here? I haven't been in that situation yet, thank okay. God. You? No, I haven't. How about you, no. Sonia? No. So you guys really have never really been deployed to um, one of the war zones? I've deployed, and I, I'm sure the others have deployed too, but it's usually in support of a war situation going on. So, for example, um, you know, if something's happening in a certain location, we may be in another location to support that mission okay. going on. Um, or we are helping at the home station, preparing mm -hmm. our own folks that are ready to deploy and going off to uh, the different war, war, war locations. Okay, exactly. So can you tell me about one of your most memorable experiences? And I'll start with you, Rosemary. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got the hard one. <laughs> well, yeah, we're going to try to keep them short because we're, we're, we mm -hmm. we're running low on right, time. But uh, I'd really love to hear about this. Wow. <coughs> I can't really think of anything that sticks out, that jumps out. I you can, know what? Oh, go, you, go, go ahead. and yeah, give you time. Yeah, sure. um, so some of the uh, things that I've, so I've been doing this for 27 years, and so I'm in human resource, that's kind of comparable in the civilian world of what that job is. But some of the amazing things that I've had to, I've been able to do is I've flown an F4. So I got to sit in the back seat of an F4 and fly in one of those, just awesome, just and fantastic. And what is an F4? Uh, it's, <laughs> a fighter, it's a fighter jet. Okay. Um, okay. And normally you don't, um, you know, just not everyone gets to fly in one of those things. So wow. it was an incentive ride for me. Um, the other thing was uh, I got to jump out of an airplane out of the C-130 with uh, our pararescue jumpers. and so. 
so it was a tandem jump and <laughs> it, it was really amazing and awesome so sometimes if you ever see our PJs jumping out, out around a Moffitt area then that's what we're doing but I got she to do that. She calls it amazing. Um, wow. It was fantastic. <laughs> it, it was the highlight of my career. Um, so you know being able to the F4 and uh, having a tangent jump um, and then also flying in a helicopter at night wearing night vision go goggles. Night and vision's awesome. So it's just a you, you know these are things even though I work in the office it's a day-to-day -day thing I still have opportunities to do all of these fantastic things that you know not everyone can say that they've jumped out an airplane or they've you know flew in a jet fighter so that's true high, <laughs> high, highlights of my career definitely and the food do you want to tell us about the food? You always the hear about food. military food. I think it's good. You're very hungry because you do a <laughs> lot of activity from ODAR 30 they call it or 4 in the morning to mm -hmm. what you eat it. It's it's good. <laughs> I think you put it's some good. salt on it, some Tabasco, listen, and you uh, eat it. I listen to MREs. And it's I'm good with MREs. <laughs> I'm good with MREs. You're so tired and hungry. I mean, you, you would eat the dirt. <laughs> that, that I, it feel like, I feel like the MREs is like, they're like a Cracker Jack box. You know, you don't know what you're going to get. And you open it up <laughs> and you sure. pull all these things out. And it's it's kind of like a tree. I don't know. At least it's in the treat. beginning when I first, you know, when I first started eating them. Mm. But, um... As far as memorable, uh, I got to do a lot of fun stuff like that. I got to help um, some of the CBs with their pre-deployment training, and so I got to drive in like the real Humvees with the guns on top mm. and everything. Wow. Um, but you know what? I think one of the biggest things for me being in the military is seeing the kind of respect that people get. You don't see that in the world. You don't see a man who would be considered goofy or you know, funny looking on the outside and in the military, that that that's not even a factor. He just treated with the utmost respect. And I think that's been one of the biggest impacts for me is to see that, to see how no matter what you, everybody respects everybody. Isn't that a shame? Why do we need to be in uniform for people to respect us? I've watched that actually. And that's kind of how I was able to get you guys to be here with me today as I saw people in the street in uniform um, and I said you know I want to do this show and military women and of course I had friends in the Air Force and the Navy but whenever I see them I just stop and I acknowledge them because they you guys put your lives on the line for our protection and our safety and I think that it's it's wonderful and not many people can sit here and tell the stories you're telling with such delight yeah. because not everybody is cut out for this type of thing and I think that we should really learn to appreciate each other and not have to be in a uniform to really appreciate you know what each person means to the world right. and so that brings me to the other questions so that we can take this away from the serious side what are some pranks you guys pulled on each other because I remembered when I did national service it was all about pranks toothpaste and shoe polish you want to share some of the you know funny things you guys did to each other, or other not know. each other but people in your in <laughs> right. your different branches that you thought were funny maybe they didn't. <laughs> um, probably more in the field. I was active duty, so we went to the field a lot. We, okay. we, we used to do some everything. Take the boots when they were mud, was mud, you know, so they would they couldn't get out of their cots in the morning. I mean. I guess there was a lot of interesting things probably we probably couldn't <laughs> repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to get anybody in trouble. <laughs> um, I can recall one time we have, um, so we're always training and practicing all the time. And so one of the things we always practice on is our chemical warfare outfits, okay. which is the gas mask and the outfit and the whole bit. We have to learn how to duck and cover in case we have a chemical attack and the whole bit. So we were doing this training in this one area and uh, me and another um, person was ready for a shift change so we went for the shift change and we were already there and there was one more person that was coming in but hadn't arrived yet and so we thought it would be kind of funny to don our gas mask and start yelling out there that take cover take cover oh. <laughs> and so that individual <laughs> shows up and um, we're yelling take cover take cover and so he's he's fumbling he's trying to get his gas mask on and he's running around trying to find oh, cover wow. and so we open the door and say no it's just a joke and he was just you know he got us back though it, it was all done in fun and it was just mm -hmm. one of those um you know kind of little pranks that you do but yeah but he got us back 
I really believe in life. It doesn't matter what you do. For me, you have to keep humor in it. Because life can be pretty serious. And so without a good laugh, you know, you can find yourself very stressed out very often. I so um, one of the other questions I had on my, on, my, on my list that I wanted to ask is, did any of you keep a diary, a personal diary? Because you have been in for a long time. Uh, not really. Okay. Um, pictures are my diary, I guess, of, of different things that I've done mm -hmm. and um, been a part of. Keeping friendships with certain people for a long time that I've met along the way. I okay. did in the beginning, you know, during basic, because, you know, it was an exciting time in my life. It was something brand new. I'd never been outside of Kansas, because I was raised in Kansas, and I'd never been outside, so meeting the different people and the different um, languages, I guess, even, because mm -hmm. we had, you know, people from, from different yeah. places, oh, and, wow. and it was oh, just yeah. so neat. And, and my postcards that I sent to other people and, and the ones I received in the letters, you know, that's, I have a box and, mm -hmm. a, and a place for everything. And mm -hmm. just to look back, you know, it was, it was so exciting. I mean, I would do basic all over again. I would. I mean, the camaraderie and then, you know, the lifelong friends, some, you know, and of course, some went different places and we lost mm -hmm. track, but I mean, it was, it was nothing like it. it. It was nothing like even being raised with a best friend. I mean, you wake up at four o'clock in the morning, you go to bed at 10, 11 o'clock, but you're with them at all times. It's, it's, there's nothing comparable, even as active duty and reserve. You're with the military, your comrades longer than you are your family, so oh, yeah. you, you become very close. It's, it's unex you can't really explain how close you are to each other. Okay. You know, it's just, you're close. <laughs> Did any and all of you go to school while you've been enlisted? Have you gone to school? Have you taken any, like, formal training for anything you have? Well, pr your, um, your, your MOS, what is it, rate? Military and or AFSC, civilian? So it's, it's military Could training Could you explain we that? What is MOS? Uh, the job that you're in, like I'm in human resource, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to be trained specifically okay. in it's a that military job. Occup oh, okay. Occupational mm -hmm. specialty. Oh, okay. Do you get to choose this, or is it? Are you assigned to it? It's it depends on your the ASVAB, mm -hmm. that, that basic test, and then you may have choices. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people have. have a lot of choices. Some, <laughs> you know, don't have as I many. I actually but. came in a different. I came in APG, so they took my civilian skills um, mm. for the needs of the Navy, and they you know, brought me in um, a higher pay grade. But uh, like probably six years ago, they merged us. I was, I was actually a dental tech. They merged us with the corpsman. So I had to do so many, you know, online hours of training and then I had to go to core school. Um, and I actually wanted to get out during that time because I was like, this is not what I signed up for. You know, I signed up for this and, and you guys are making me do this. And so I was kind of, I was kind of discouraged, but I'm really glad that I did. Um, go to core school and I didn't get out because um, now I have all these opportunities open to me and I'm actually um, going to be going to a C school in July. I'm going to be going to a surgical tech um, school. So That's the greatest thing about the military. I've had three so many specialties. Opportunities. Missiles, yeah. human resources, and now medical. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can move around. There's Great. So much. Yeah. You really can give a line, you know. It's wonderful. Very well, we're running out of time, but I have a couple of questions I'd really like to get answers, to get answered rather. And one of them is, um, and I'm gonna ask you, Teresa, and then I'm gonna try to sure. get your opinion as well. We'll try to keep them short. Um, how has your life in the, in the military ex um, affected your view on life? Your experience in the military, how's that, how has that influenced the way you see life, I guess is. Oh, um, it's touched it a lot. I mean, um, you know, just, um, because we have a diverse military. There's so many different types of people and you learn so much from them is, is the education just in that itself mm -hmm. is that you're learning their backgrounds and um, how they were brought up or some of their beliefs and things of that nature. It's uh, helped me with my confidence. I mean, it's just some of the training that I've experienced, like yeah. basic training, going through the confidence course. You know, just running and, and doing a lot of different things is just um, giving me a lot of confidence in, in life itself. Um, knowing that I'm able to do a lot of stuff, I'm going to school, you know, knowing that, you know, I'm getting an education, things of that nature. So it's turned it around a lot. Thank you. And you? It's, um, it's really my... impacted my life in a positive way. My children, I'm a role model for my children. Uh, they don't, it, it's not, how can I say it? Like, I, I know I'm not active duty, but it's really impacted my life. Like, I'm healthier, um, you know, it keeps me straight, it keeps me, 
I, I don't know, it keeps me from doing things that, you know, bad things, I guess. <laughs> or, you know, it just, it's really impacted me in a positive way. Okay, wonderful. And yeah. Sonia? Well, I think about it on a broad, um, well, I guess a bigger, you know, thoughts. Because, you know, growing up in America, we don't think about the freedoms that we have. And after joining the military, and, and especially after 9-11, and sending our soldiers off, and, and, and seeing what they really fight for, and we look at the other, I have five daughters, you know, and or five girls at home, and, and I look at the other countries who, who their children are taken from them and, and put into slavery and, and prostitution and everything, and mm -hmm. I think of, mm -hmm. about America and how proud I am to serve in a country who we fight to, to keep it the way it is here, you know, we, you know, it's amazing, you know, when we think about how free that we are, you know, and I really do. I look at my girls when they're sleeping and I'm proud, like the song says, proud to be American, you know, mm -hmm. because we are free and, and we protect our own and, and that's what the military has done. I didn't think about that before I joined. I mean, I just lived life and I was free and I, I went to school and that's how it should have been. But, you know, the military and, and serving. You know, you think about, mm -hmm. wow, you know, it's like, wow. <laughs> Isn't that true, though? Isn't that true how many of us just take so many things mm -hmm. for granted? I'm listening to you ladies, and I'm thinking s we take so much for granted. But we're down to one minute, and so I do have a question that I would really like um, at least one person in the group to answer, and that is, what would you want to say to women out there who are interested in enlisting? I actually tell women all the time when they ask me like about the military, I'm like, join them while you have until you're 36. And while there's still time, <laughs> there's still time, you know, because they see all the things that I get to do and, and I do have opportunities for travel and I do, you know, have opportunities for, you know, fitness and they're going to the gym and I'm, you know, just self-disciplined because I have to be. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, I'm like, join, it's the best thing that, you know, besides finding God, you know, or, or having him in my life. It's the best it's thing I could have done. It's very rewarding. You can serve your country and other people and your, your fellow, fellow Americans. Okay, mm -hmm. this was such a privilege, guys. It's always wonderful when anyone takes time to come and sit here and share whatever with us, but this was specifically and especially interesting and informative, and I hope that people out there who are interested have heard what you've had to say and can make an informed decision. I thank everyone for watching us and my crew. Without them, I can't have a show. <laughs> and thank you again, ladies, so much. You're welcome. For thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Giving up your Saturday <laughs> to come and do this with me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.